So in this video, I'm going to explain what the algorithm is that YouTube uses, how you can then use it on your channel, and then how by using it on your channel, you'll get more views and you'll find more traffic coming your way to your videos. But first, how do you know it works? You know, the algorithm has perplexed YouTubers for many years and understandably so that YouTube wants to keep its algorithm under wraps so people can't misuse the system. And it's extremely difficult to understand and yet, a recent YouTube update on YouTube Studio has given us some clues about our own channels and what we need to do to get a bigger audience. It is worth saying though that there are many algorithms, not just one on YouTube, but we're going to look at the main one where YouTube suggests your videos to an audience. And if it works, then you'll find it will grow quite rapidly and quite quickly. And this is in effect the simplest algorithm to get the quickest results. So you need to know where to look on YouTube to get this information that's gonna help you fill out the boxes and then use that to help build a better audience. So we'll dive into YouTube Studio shortly, but first of all, let's just go back to the algorithm itself. What makes it simple? Well, we're going to simplify it because in effect, it's a bit like filling in boxes on a password. If you're asked to log into someone's phone, and then as you went to log in, you said, oh, I need your username and password. Then by giving you the username and password, putting it in the correct boxes, you then get access. Well, YouTube's algorithm needs several things put into the right boxes. And you need to get that information first before you then get the benefits of logging in and seeing how it works. So what type of information do you need to harvest about your channel? Well, you need to know things like what does your audience prefer watching? Does it prefer watching shorts or long form? You need to know things like what age is my audience? Because that will affect their attention span. What also is the recent videos they've watched that have particularly piqued their interest? You need to know when they're online. Uh, when should you release your videos to maximize the amount of interest? Because again, it's known that the algorithm responds if it's popular to your current audience. And what are the key words that they're using to find your channel? So all that kind of information, you might think you know, but sometimes it's good to get that information to harvest it now so it's ready to go into the right boxes. So before I show you where you get that information, if you haven't subscribed already, do so if you're finding this useful. Let's go to YouTube Studio next then. So go to YouTube Studio and then go to Analytics. And there then you're looking for the top content in this period. And what this does is just gives you an idea as to what actually is seen as your niche at the moment. So topics might vastly be different. You need to then rethink if they are different because if they're too different, then they'll be weakening your niche. Google considers your channel about. So that's the first thing. Just make sure you've got really videos that are looking consistent and the same. The second thing you need to do is then go to audience. So if you click on audience and here again, you're going to get some really valuable information because you've now got these are the channels that my audience is watching in the last 28 days. So I can look to see, and I can click on these channels, maybe even subscribe to them just to see what is it they're talking about? What's going down? Because my audience is also getting their information. So in effect, this is my competition, but also I can work with it. So if I go through these, I can see there's some really big channels there and some smaller channels too. So I'm competing against various types of channels. I need to be familiar with what it is that they're showing my audience and make sure then that I'm using videos that are helping to grow my audience because these actually ring true with my audience here. So that's really important. We're building a clear understanding of what it is that my audience actually watches. And another thing then we need to do, what my audience actually watches, these are the videos that they're watching as well. So am I watching these videos? Do I talk about Ranking number one on Google, yes I do. Do I talk about Facebook? Maybe I don't talk about that enough now. Do I talk about more about making money on Google? Not really my scene, so I'm not really doing that. But Google Bard I talk about, so maybe I need to consider a bit more in chat GPT. So some of my channel are more into AI, and some of my channel are more into ranking on Google. So I need to kind of consider which one of those two niches am I going to focus on in the coming weeks ahead. And here this is telling me when my 
users are on. So again, releasing a video around about here at 12 o'clock would make sense. So I get a good run then of my audience picking up my videos. Whereas if I released it here, uh, perhaps in the darker areas on Saturday morning, that wouldn't really work very well for my audience. So that's another way, knowing your audience and then using or allowing Google to suggest it. And you get tools like TubeBuddy here suggesting three o'clock on a Wednesday. So as you can see, the format then of the video as well is important. Should it be long form? Should it be short? Should it be live? You get an idea. We also look at where they're coming from. We'll also look at uh, where they've subscribed and also the age as well. So my age group around about 35 to 40. Whereas if it's teenagers or 18 to 24s, then maybe the attention span would be slightly different. So again, you would make sure that your videos uh, really took into account the age group as well that you were appealing to. So what actually is the algorithm itself? Well, creators have tried to use two-dimensional, three-dimensional charts, even four-dimensional in some ways. And it's not an easy thing to explain, but as you can see here, it kind of just shows you that you're taking a slice of chunk and depending on what type of chunk you take will depend on how big or small your audience is and whether or not you niche down to a smaller audience, but then it's easier to get the traffic there. If you go broader, it can be more difficult, but you've got a bigger audience as well and a greater appeal. And then you've got shorts versus long-term or long-form videos. So you have a topic or a channel topic. And the aim is for your videos to be clear enough so that YouTube understands what the audience actually is and what the topic's about. So when YouTube understands it, it then starts to suggest your videos to the audience that it thinks would suit it. And it just does a little trial and test, a trial and test. And if it's successful, it'll continue to then trial it more and make it perhaps a slightly broader audience. So things like your click-through rate will make a difference. How your current subscribers react when you release your video will make a difference too. And if your video does well, then make another video very similar to it. And that will help it also continue to build traction in that little small audience It will grow. And it's surprising how people will click on a video that's very similar to the previous one if they feel they'll still get something out of it. And as we've just seen, you can now go to YouTube Studio and see exactly what it is the audience does watch. So that gives you a massive clue as to what they are being entertained by or what they're choosing to watch at the moment. But there's also a way of knowing what they want to watch in the future. And that goes through a different algorithm. That's the one to do with the keywords itself. So you click on analytics in YouTube Studio, and then just on the far right hand side, you've got research. And there, if you then click on your viewers searches, you get to see here some of the things they're searching for. And if you've got quite a lot of these, you can even go for, rather than just all searches, you can go for content gaps only. And what content gaps are is just areas where Google will consider that the audience wants a particular video, but they're not being served it yet because there's not been a high enough quality video to fill that gap. And those are really key. If you can get a content gap video, then that means there's a big audience waiting for a quality video there. So if you want to know a bit more about how the YouTube algorithm works, there's a far more detailed version of that on another video, which I'll put a link to. But if you just want to know how I try to blow up my channel with 30 videos and whether I succeeded, then don't miss that video, which is here. So I'll see you on one of those two videos.